and here under the Perry stuff folder, and that just shows you that that folder is shared. So now let's go back to the, Win the Linux, Linux machine. I'm getting so confused here. Let's go back to the Linux machine, and we'll see how to access the stuff in this Perry stuff folder. Now there's a couple different ways to gain access to that share over on the Windows machine. The first way that I'm going to show you is with the Samba client command, SMB client. Okay, and what you do here is you follow this by a double slash followed by the machine name that you're going to get the share from. Then you follow that by a slash and then you put the share name. And remember, I gave the share the same name as the directory, Perry Stuff. Okay, so this is saying uh, connect to the machine Nugget 2, get the share Perry Stuff, and sort of, you know, give me access to it via the Samba client command. Now the Samba client is assuming that uh, my username on Nugget 2 is the same as my username here, Perry but it's actually not. My username over on that Windows machine is Trainer. So what I'm going to do is give it the capital U option and follow that by Trainer. That's saying I want to connect to Nugget2 as the user Trainer. And it's going to prompt me for a password to make sure that I'm uh, you know, verified that I actually am the user Trainer. I'm allowed to enter that account. Okay, so I'll hit enter here. And it says I uh, got a positive name query response and now it's pass asking me for the password. So I'll type in my password hit enter and now I'm at the Samba client prompt this is like FTP okay it's like FTP in that it's like this text-based uh, you know sort of primitive interface to get files and put files back and forth and if we do a help here you'll see it's very similar to FTP you know there's an LS and there's a dir uh, there's the get command and the put command okay to get files from the Windows machine and bring them to my local machine or to put files from my Linux machine out to that Windows machine Okay, so this is, you know, this is your, the set of commands that you have available to you. I can do an ls, and now you can see this is the stuff that's in the share. The file Linux syllabus.txt is there, and there's this directory called Perry, and you can tell it's a directory because all the directories have Ds by them over here. Okay, so um, if I'm going to get that file, I can get Linux syllabus.txt, okay, and that is going to get the file, and it's going to bring it over to my local machine. So if I quit out of here and do an ls, you'll see now that I've got this file called Linux syllabus.txt in my home directory and it's on my local machine now. I can edit this file on my local machine, I can do whatever I want. If I want to put it back over to the share, then I get back into Samba client and I would use the put command and I would put it from my local machine out to that uh, window share. Okay, so now we can see how to use Samba client to do things. Uh, let me show you another way that you can access that window share. Now let me show you another way that you can access those Windows shares from the Linux machine. Okay, and the new command is called Samba mount, SMB mount. And you specify the, the share the exact same way that you did for the Samba client command. You specify the name of the machine followed by the name of the folder that you want to share, that you want to grab the share from. And then, rem remember the Linux mount command uh, that we learned a while back. It, you said mount the device that you were mounting and the directory that you were mounting it into. And the Samba mount has a similar syntax. You say the share that you want to mount and then the directory that you want to mount it into. And I'll just mount it into my hold directory that's below my home directory here. And the hold directory is empty, so this will be perfectly fine. Okay, so I'll hit enter here. It'll pass, prompt me for my Perry password. Okay, so I'll do that. And then uh, if I go into the hold directory and do a listing, you'll see the stuff that was in the Nugget 2 Perry stuff folder. Now there's a, an important distinction here though, is that this stuff, I mean it looks like it's local. If I do a long listing on it, I mean you'll see all the permissions over here, you'll see the Perry folder, it looks like a directory, you know it's got the D set in front. This stuff, it's owned by me it says here and so on. But the, the, the trick here is this stuff really isn't on my local machine, okay? It's still back here on Nugget 2 and if I brought this file, Linux syllabus.txt, into like a text editor like Emacs or something and I changed it and I saved it, it would actually be saved back here on Nugget 2. Okay? So, I mean, this is okay. This is probably why you're sharing the files in the first place is because you want people on the remote machine to be able to save it. Remember, we checked that box back on the Windows machine so that, uh, you know, remote users could edit these files and save them and write to that directory. Okay? So this is probably what we, what we want, but just be aware that when you're saving stuff here, you're really saving it back on Nugget 2. Okay? And uh, another command that you should probably know here is the Samba unmount command. So we'll get out of the hold directory so we can unmount this thing. And remember, the Linux unmount command was just uh, umount, so this is Samba umount. And we'll just say the name of the directory that we're unmounting here. 
and we'll do a listing. And if we go into the hold directory and do a listing, you'll see it's empty now. So the link between the hold directory and, and Perry stuff on Nugget 2 is gone now. Okay, there's nothing left in the hold directory. Okay, and there not, there nothing was really there anyway, right? It was always linked back to Nugget 2 Perry stuff, and that link was broken when we did the Samba unmount command. One important thing to remember is a while back also we talked about the set UID permissions. Remember that normal people could run commands that seem like they should be root commands, like you'd have to be root to run them, uh, like changing a password file and stuff like that. But normal users have to be able to do some of this stuff like mount shares from window machines. And so if we go up into user bin and we do a long listing on the Samba stuff here, I'll do an ls minus l smb star, you'll see all the Samba commands here like Samba client, Samba mount, Samba unmount, and there's some other ones that we didn't learn. But you'll see on the ones that we used that the set UID bits are set. Remember that if, if an S is in that X position, in the execute position, that means it's set UID, and that means anybody can run it, and they'll be root temporarily while they're running it. Okay, So you can see the Samba client's got it, the Samba mount's got it, and the Samba unmount's got it. And that's why we, I was able to run those commands as Perry instead of being root. Okay, So if you're having trouble running these commands as a normal user, make sure to get the root user, if that's you or somebody else, to change these commands so that their set UID permissions are set. So our final topic is NFS, the networked file system. And this is definitely the most common way to share files between Linux computers and Linux and Unix computers and so on. Okay. Now to set some of this stuff up, you have to be the root user, so I'll switch over here. Now, the only catch here is that I don't have another Linux box here in my office to set this up officially so that we can actually share files between two computers. So instead, I'll just walk you through the steps, and it's pretty much just the same as the Samba stuff, and it shouldn't be too surprising how we do it. Um, just a couple little different commands and a little bit different syntax. So let me show you how, how you would do this. So say we've got some machine named Adams. Okay, and we want to mount on our local machine something from that Adams machine. So I would specify the machine name. Instead of using slash slash followed by the machine name, I'm going to use the Linux convention of machine name followed by a colon. And then you follow that by the name of the directory that you want to share. Okay, so like home John Doe, for instance. Okay, so now th then what I do is I give the mount point where I want that uh, directory to be uh, visible on my local machine. Okay, so just like the Samba mount command, we give the mount command. Instead of Samba mount, we say mount. And then we specify the name of the machine and the share that we want to bring to our local machine. The syntax is a little different. And then we specify the local uh, mount point, which is exactly the same syntax as we used before. Okay, now if there actually was a machine Adams here hooked up to my network, um, after I did this, I could go into the mount doe directory and I would see all the stuff that was in home John Doe. Now the nice thing about uh, NFS is that all the permissions are carried over from this uh, directory to the mount doe directory. Okay? So that's what's nice about NFS is all the file permissions are carried over across NFS mounts. And to unmount such a share, you would just use the umount command and you would say umount mount slash doe. Now, like I said, typically only the root user can mount these things, but you, the root user can actually set it up so that in the um, Etsy FS tab file, this just stands for the file system table file, okay, um, there's a bunch of information in there. Now, if there was an NFS share that you wanted to mount, the, the type here would be NFS, okay, for the share. The mount point would be here, the label would be over here, and then there'd be some, some uh, things in here. If there was a user label in here, okay, with the NFS share, that would say that a user can mount it, okay? The no auto here says don't mount it automatically. So in this case, you can see the CD-ROM is not mounted automatically, the floppy is not mounted automatically, and so on, okay? Now, if there was an NFS share here and we wanted it to be automatically mounted, we could leave out the no auto, and then it would be automatically mounted every time, and the users could just access that other machine every time. And that's probably the most typical way to do it. When I was at a university, when I was at a, in, in industry, typically what we would do is uh, when you booted up your system, you would get these mount points mounted automatically, and so I could just access these shares on other computers with, without typing any commands. Okay? All I would do is CD into that directory, and it would be there for me. And there's one final step to make NFS shares uh, accessible over the network. 
Just like when we went on, onto our Windows box and we made the Perry stuff folder shareable over the network, we have to go onto the machine, the host machine, and tell that host machine that this directory is going to be shareable to these other machines. Okay, so uh, we were using Atoms as the hypothetical host machine that was hosting uh, the directories that, that we wanted to share. So what I would do on Atoms is I would go into the Etsy directory, okay, and I would look at this file.